دستور مدد یه سایب و سیف شای بریتون که بیسی رابانی مدد السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاتو Welcome to you Welcome to me Welcome first to our Sultan Shay Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani That must be what Allah and His Prophet and all the angels and the awliya they are saying to him Welcome Welcome We have entered into the second day of the Urs of our Grand Sheikh, the 40th in the chain of the Naqshbandi order. The Sultan of Sultans, the Saint of the Saints, Dunya and Ahirat. The creation is witnessing a loss from its physical uh, way, from its physical manifestation, it's witnessing the loss of one of the greatest uh, saints that ever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, the one who is most beloved to him, the one who is most beloved to the Holy Prophet to to his family, to his companions, to all the awliya Allah. And we are feeling very sad and we are feeling very sorry to not be with him here physically. But Shem Allah, had passed through so many years of physical suffering. And yesterday, the physical suffering stopped. Just because of that, that Shaykh Mawlana is not under physical torture anymore. Just because of that, although we love him and we miss him and we always want to be with him, but just because he is not under that pain anymore, we are saying, Thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for stopping that. And now, has such a thing happened before? That the most beloved one to Allah and His Prophet, that they have come to this world and they have spread the teachings of Allah they have brought mankind to the Siratul Mustaqim to make them to stay in the Siratul Mustaqim and to make their hearts to turn to the Mawla. Those ones, has it ever happened that Allah gave them life to live in this world and Allah takes their life? Of course, it has happened. It has happened to hundreds and thousands of prophets. It has happened to hundreds and thousands of Allah. And it had happened first to our Jama'at that we had lost physically the contact with our Sultan, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Kankabri Rabbani, almost two years ago. That we thought never such a thing was going to happen, at least not for a very long time, although. Shaykh Afani has spoken about him being veiled, him passing from this world, him disappearing for years. Although he had spoken about how we must continue the work, although he has passed, how we have to uh, hold on tightly to the rope, And not to let shaitan and the fitna always to interfere. Always. But to kick it out. 
not to be engulfed. He had made us to go through that before he passed. He has spoken to us many times. Once he had said, it was during a Qurban time. They said, what is going to happen now? What if I were to pass from this world now? And we were busy that time cutting the Qurban and hanging it and cutting it and cleaning it and distributing the meat as it is part of our tradition and part of Islam. And he asked, what if your sheikh were to pass? And he gave the answer. He says, half of you will stop to bury me. The other half is going to continue your work. And that is exactly what he said. And that is what we're doing. We're not going to stop the work. As we had said before, two years ago, when people started to become very emotional and very confused, what are we going to do now? They're saying, my heart is so broken, I cannot go on. I don't know what to do. I'm very sad, I'm very confused. We're saying, why are you sad? Why are you confused? I don't know what to do now. That means you never knew what to do in the beginning. Because if you knew what you're supposed to do, that time it doesn't matter what happens, you're going to continue the work. We knew, for example, Shaf and is saying we were cutting the Qurban. That is the work, that is what we're busy with, make, doing that work. Now, he said, what if I were to be veiled right now? What's going to happen? He says, continue the work. Half of you, half of you, bury me. So, now, beyond all the talk and all the emotions and all the sadness that we are feeling, there is still the underlying niyat intention and the action is the work. It is still the hizmat. After everything else, there is still the hizmat. If you are concentrating on the hizmat, you're going to feel sad, of course. But later you're going to say, if I continue like this, who is going to continue the work? I cannot, because this work is for Sheikh Vendi. And he likes it, and he wants me to do it. So I must even put all my sadness, and I must put all my emotions aside for now, control myself, and to continue the work. Isn't this what the Sahabi Kiram, they did? They did. They continued the work. And when Sheikh Fendi, Hazrat Lari, Shabu Khan Kabrisiya Rabbani, when he was veiled, we continued the work. The uh, successorship was made very clear. And we continued. Because we have been given the flag, and we've been given our work, and we must continue no matter what. What happens when you are in war? Someone is carrying the flag, isn't it? And that person is shot. All his friends, you're going to stop now and cry for him? What are you going to do? And do what? Carry the flag, yes. It's the flag now, it's not even your friend. It's beyond everything else, it is the work. Someone must step up. To take the flag, the flag cannot fall. That one is shot. Another one must come up. You're not going to sit and say, Oh, my friend, I love you so much. What am I going to do? My life is finished. You must carry the flag now. And what they said in the Ottoman Wars, where they see the flag still standing up. They see so many dead bodies on top of it to make that flag to be standing up. Now, we're not going to let that flag to fall. And our share has trained us enough for us to be able to carry these days too. Because these days are going to come with confusion and fitna and too much talk. But where is the work? Oh, Allahu Alam. What is the work? Who is asking? What is Shem of Lana's work? What is Shaykh and his work now? At least for us, our Jamaat, we know what Shaykh and his work is. 
we did not stop. Yes, we feel sad. Yes, we feel like we want to end everything. But we know if we give in a little bit, shaitan is going to jump on it. Our ego is going to take over and he's going to fool us. So then what happened? The work has to continue. So, when Holy Prophet said to us, Salam, he passed from this world. He was veiled from this world. We are believers, we are murids, we don't say they die. It's very bad manners and it is not true. They are passed from this world or they are veiled. Because Allah Himself says, don't think that those who are slain in the way of Allah, that they are dead. This is ayat from the Quran. They are not dead, but they are fresh and alive in their graves in a way you don't understand. So the prophets, they are not dead. They are fresh and they are alive. And when the Prophet said to us, he passed. And then there was so much confusion. Because there were so many munafiks around that they wanted to take over the situation, to use it for their own benefit, to divide people and to start fighting with each other. Those that the Holy Prophet had given work for them to do, they're not busy with that. They may not even be too much involved in so many of the things because they are busy with their work. It doesn't matter now. But when Holy Prophet ﷺ passed and there was so much confusion and people were saying so many things. And that was when Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, the one that Holy Prophet ﷺ said, if there was a prophet after me, it was going to be Umar. He took out his sword and he went around saying, whoever says that Muhammad is dead, I'll kill him. Who's saying that he is dead? Understand the meaning now. It is not just because he is emotional that he cannot uh, take the reality that Prophet is past. Of course he knows that. But he also knows that there are those who say, you see, he is dead. He is a normal human being. Everything that he stood up for now meaning is dead too. He passed, so his work is also passed. That was the meaning of so many fitna makers that time. So he took out his sword and he says, Say, I dare you to say that he is dead and I'll cut your neck off. To which Hazrat Abu Bakr said, Ya Umar, be gentle. Ya Umar, calm down. Then he quoted from the ayat, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, the peer of Anakshbandi Tarikat, the first of our grand sheikhs after the Holy Prophet ﷺ, quoted from the ayat saying that the prophets, do you think they are not going to pass? They are like the prophets of old, Allah. Send them to this world and Allah will take their lives. And at the same time, he stood up and he addressed to everyone and he covered everything, every angle, saying, Those who say, those who worship Muhammad, والسلام, know that Muhammad is dead. But those who worship Allah to know that Allah is Hayu and Qayyum. His life is everlasting and is never in need of anything. He's self-sustaining. Look at what he says. I'm saying because he addressed everything. We said before, for the believer we don't say that the prophets and the beloveds of Allah, that they are dead. Now the closest companion of the Holy Prophet is saying, know that Muhammad is dead. What a language. Huh? How far it is now. For those who don't understand, this is what they're going to see. And Wahhabis, they love to quote this. To say, you see, Prophet is dead. Don't go to his tomb. 
Don't ask him for prayers. Don't ask him for shafaat. He's dead. He can do nothing for you. Because, see, Abu Bakr is saying, Muhammad is dead. But the second part of that sentence depends on the first part. First part is what? For those of you who worship Muhammad, والسلام, know that he is dead. Now I ask, out of the hundreds and thousands that entered into Islam during the time of the Prophet, والسلام, which one of them worship Muhammad? والسلام? None. None. None worship the Prophet. But he's saying, if you worship the Prophet, then he is dead. If you don't worship the Prophet, والسلام, but you worship Allah, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hayyu and Qayyum, divinely Hayyu and Qayyum, now the Holy Prophet, والسلام, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the qualities of Rauf and Rahim in the Quran. Wahhabis, they hate that too. They say, no, no. Rauf and Rahim, all this ism, all this sifat is only for Allah. Allah sifat is not Allah. Allah can give it to someone else. It doesn't mean that He's going to give everything that is from Him. In fact, Allah doesn't give something from Him because He is Ahad. He is indivisible. So in the ayat of Lakat Jaakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the Prophet is Rauf and Rahim. The divine names that is given to Allah, He says, I bestow it to the Prophet. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is saying now, If you worship Muhammad, know that Muhammad is dead. If you worship Allah, know that Allah is Hayyu and Qayyum. If you worship Allah, and if you love the Prophet, And to know that the Prophet is alive, the Prophet is also Hayyu and Qayyum, not in the way that Allah is, but what Allah has given that is for him, especially for him. So many not understanding, so many are going to take my words to twist it also. But I've covered every angle now. If you worship Muhammad, know that Muhammad is dead. If you don't worship him, and if you worship Allah, just as Allah is Hayyu and Qayyum, the Holy Prophet said to Islam, he is ever living, not in the same way as Allah is, and is ever sustaining, but not in the same way as Allah is. So now, those who are in this way, and we're seeing the veiling of our Grand Sheikh, Sultan of the Awliyas, to know that he is not dead, that he is fresh and he is alive, and he is living, and Allah is granting him the ability to sustain. Alhamdulillah, this much we can say that at least now, Shah Effendi and Shah Mawlana, they are together. And Shah Effendi is very happy. Shah Mawlana is very happy. And we're asking them always to send us their support. And now, we have two swords. Or the sword now, because the Sahib will say, he has the sword, the sword now is two. It's split turns into Zulfikar. And that Zulfikar will return. Inshallah Rahman. Shaykh Effendi will return. Shaykh Mawlana has said this. That he's going to return. For what? For the events that are going to happen in the last days. Don't think of it. Uh, there's so many things in Islam that you don't understand. So many secrets. Those who say there are no secrets in Islam, then they don't understand nothing then they think that they are Allah because Allah is a secret. The Prophet والسلام, is a secret you will never understand. The sun is a secret that you will not understand. You yourself have a secret that if you don't have a guide to guide you for you to know yourself, you will not know yourself.
the secret that you are carrying. So don't say there are no secrets in Islam. And if Shah Effendi is coming back for that final war between Haq and Batil, between the forces of truth against the forces of Dajjal, Shah Mawlana will be coming back too. And we are the first to say. And we are waiting for that. And we are preparing ourselves for that. Because we have been prepared by our Shah to concentrate only on the work. Work within ourselves to step on our ego. And to watch out for our nafs and shaitan. Don't sleep. Sleeping. Too much sleeping. To so step on our ego. With the small things, then big things will come easy. You know you have a well-oiled machinery. It doesn't work. So many times it doesn't work. Not because the engine is not working, but because there is some sand or some dust. Isn't it? Isn't it? Get rid of that dust. Those things you give in so easy. Huh? But other things, when they touch your ego, you're standing up firm and say that, how can someone be saying this to me? Why is that? You must change. Whatever dust, it must be the dust that is under the feet of our shah that we put on top of our heads. And we want to be that dust that is under the feet of our shaykhs, that wherever that they are traveling, that we will be with them. But there must be a function, there must be a reason why we are. What is our work? What is our function? You cannot just say, oh, I just love, love, love. What does that mean, love? Don't forget, we all have love. What does that mean, love? Oh, it means this and it means that. Is that according to you or according to the Prophet or according to Sahabi Kiram? If I make any daytime talk show host talk about love, they can speak for years talking about love, isn't it? What did Prophet? What, how did the Sahabi Kiram show their love to the Prophet? By involving themselves in fitna, by fighting with one another. There is, we're on the brink of something really great. We're on the brink of bringing all the ummah together. Understand this. More I cannot say. Where is your part? Are you at least opening your hands to ask for that? Are you at least opening your hands to ask, may I be those ones who are still true and strong in the way when those holy ones, when those tremendous ones, they are going to return to this world. When I look at them, they know that I've prepared myself, that I didn't give in to my ego just to be weak and in the name of sadness, just to be emotional and to be giving up from everything. That, you don't have to be a scholar to answer. For that, you don't have to be a saint to answer. For that, you have to sit down and understand what is your role in all of this. What is your work in this jamaat? If you don't have work, we have a lot of work to give you. Because our jamaat, chef and his jamaat, the Osmanlin, Naqshubandi, Jama'at, we're busy with things that concerns us. We're not busy with things that don't concern us. And there's a lot of work that we have to do. And that is how we show our love. Both outside physical work, what we're doing, and inside. When you submit, when you try to change, you are working on yourself. That time we hope to be like what? Like the dust. Now bring that dust. Bring that dust. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bring it here. Bismillah. Mr. Sit. No need. Leave that. This is contained here. Is dust. You're saying, what do you mean dust? Isn't dust under our feet? Why are you putting it on top of your head? We say because this is very holy dust. Because this dust was under the sandals of our Grand Sheikh, Sultan al -Awliya. Because this dust was collected. Leave, bring that.
it was collected from the sandals of our grandsha. Almost one year ago, the one of Shem Olana's most trusted ones that had been serving him for 40 years, Hussein Effendi, he came to visit the Osmanli Dergah that he has been invited for years to come to visit. During Shah Effendi's uh, time, when he was here physically, he did not come. After Shah Effendi was veiled, then he came. And he came for Qurban. And he brought with him a pair of sandals, he said, that Shem Olana was wearing. But they took those sandals and they threw it into the garbage. And he decided to take it and to give it to me. So I took it and I put it on top of my head. And he smiled. And from that smile, I know that he felt very happy because he knows that Shah Effendi, Shah Abdul Karim Effendi had trained as well. That these are the sandals of the Sultan al We must look at it as if these are the sandals of what? Of Shah Abdul Qadir Gelani, Qadir Of the sandals of Salman al-Farisi, of the sandals of Imam al-Rabbani, of the sandals of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, as the sandals of the Holy Prophet wasalam. I don't care if they have millions of sandals over there, they throw to garbage. We pick up from garbage. And we clean. And we make it good. Because that is the way the prophets and the saints, they have behaved. Not us, but the way that the saints and the prophets, they have behaved. They always take things from the garbage and they clean and they present it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He found every one of us in the garbage. We are garbage if we are running after the dunya. We are garbage if we are running after our egos. We are garbage if we run after our desires. And He picked us up from all that garbage and He cleaned us to make us understand what is our spirit and to make us understand what is shaitan and what is our ego and He cleaned. And these sandals, these holy sandals, we decided to uh, give it to our brother here in, for him to put in the dergah that Shah Fendi is feeling very comfortable in that he has always said that he will come to ease his mind and his heart and it came to my heart to give it to him so our brother Osman took this I gave it to him I wanted to see what he's going to do with it too it was also a test we never tell people what to do too we're gonna see how their hearts are going to move how much love they're going to have how much wakefulness they're going to have there is not just a claim. I came a few days ago. Yesterday he said, I have something to show you. I was shocked. And he said, this is what we did. This is what we are doing. We decided to put this up. We decided to give it a ghusl. To put rose water and rose oil. And to place it for barakat in the dergah here. It is not because of this physical thing. It is because of who is wearing it. You understand? It is not because this is valuable by itself. No. But it's the person who wore it that gave it value. It is not the chair. It is not the throne that has value. It's who sits there. Doesn't matter if it's the throne of Sultan or the throne of Sultan al Awliya. It's who sits there that gives it value. And we're giving value to it because it was once under the feet of our grandsha. Because we want to always be under the feet of our Shah and under the feet of our grandsha. Because we know our grandsha through him. We claim that we're going to know our grand chef through ourselves, 
then definitely we're just going to be following our ego. So many people have fallen into that trap, following their ego, thinking that they are following Haq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hearts to become together, to make us to become more sincere, and to make us to have stronger faith, to step on our ego, not to be weak and to give in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us patience and give us more muhabbat. That muhabbat, that love, can only be obtained when you are running for hizmat. More hizmat that you are making, more service, more muhabbat. May Allah increase our strength to make more hizmat in this way, inshallah. And for muhabbat to our shaykh, and for our shaykh's muhabbat to us to increase. Wa min Allah tawfiq, may Allah forgive me and bless all of you. May Allah give guidance to the whole ummat. May Allah grant more mercy to the whole ummat. May Allah grant more clarity to the whole ummat and especially to those ones following in this way. May we always be together and not be separated. May we not be fooled by those ones who are making fitna. May we be busy with the work ourselves. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, Lay Sattu Asam, Sultan al Awliya, and Shaykh Effendi, Sahib al Saif, Al Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Inshallah Rahman, uh, we have, who do we have? Aslambai from Arkansas and Mehmet from Bursa. Who we have? Speak, you. Ahmed Chan Bay, FND from uh, Duzje. Mm -hmm. Waking up. Stop now. So, who do we have contacting us right now? Chef and his wakils from the Speak world. Speak up, I cannot hear you. Chef and his wakils from all over the world. From Turkey and Malaysia, China. They are here to speak to us? Yes, Sojo. Okay, put them on. Welcome to you. Yeah. So, we are together. Huh? From all over the world now, we are together under the flag of our Shaykh. And we are using this technology not to make fitna, not to make division. We're making, using this technology to bring people together. Alhamdulillah, may it be blessed. Because you're going to see maybe in the next few days people using technology just to go back and forth now. We should not. We should be busy with our work. There is enough now. Now the whole world is looking at us. And the whole world is looking at this Jamaat. What we are going to be busy with. Any questions anyone has? How is Bursa, Mehmet? Bursa is good, mashallah. How is Istanbul? Mashallah. And how is Juzje? Juzje Nasu.
Hey, you. MashaAllah. And how is Germany? All my Yanas. He's giving salam and kissing your hand to respect. Alaikum salam, mashallah. Yeah, that's good. He's, oh, and he's bringing salams from all the murids in Germany, and uh, they're continuing with the work of doing sawfed and zikr and gathering people. Continue with that, inshallah. They all made in the wazife, inshallah. And how is China? Bre, Halim, you sleeping? We are sending salam to you from uh, China. Yeah, we are sending salam to you, Hoji. Yeah. Very good, Ali. Salam. Yeah. And uh, Hoji, gathered together for our whole as well, Hoji. Very good. Like I said before, for everyone. If you want to have Maulut continuously for seven nights, you can. If you cannot gather people, do it by yourself, alone. You can do that. If you want to do it for 40 days, you can. Make the intention that you're going to do it for at least 40 days. Just make the intention. Inshallah, that time we're going to get more support from our share to do it. Um, and how is Malaysia? Uh, the weather has been very good. It's been raining the past couple of days. It's cooler. Uh, we did the uh, zikr for the Urs of uh, Shem Alana yesterday. Okay. And everybody sending their salams to you. Kissing your hands. Alaikum salam. Continue to do it, inshallah. Seven days, forty days, it doesn't matter. Inshallah. Yeah. And not so little man from Little Rock. Alaikum Hoja. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We are all here again for the second night. Ah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we had uh, about 30 people yesterday and today we have about 6-7 Ikhwan come in the second day and so forth. Yeah, that's good. That's and okay, very good. My salams to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. How is Zuzja? Hi, Krishna. Uyuyu. Uyuyu. Yeah. Inshallah Rahman. Yeah. May our Shaykh's blessings be on us everywhere. May more Osmanli like Shabali Delga open. Inshallah. For everyone to be under the banner and under Sayyid Sayyid's Sayyid banner and Sultan Al Ayyid's banner. Inshallah Rahman. Don't drop them. Don't drop the flag. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very I will see you. My salams to everyone, to all the ones. Come on. Inshallah Rahman, I will see you tomorrow for the Juma. And Inshallah, tomorrow too, we're going to have Maulut continuing. If you have any questions, we may speak tomorrow after the Juma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again raise the station of our Sultan and our Sultan al awliya higher and keep us in the Sirat al Mustaqim. Al Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.